Hello, my name is Sasha Ansia, and today I'll be demonstrating how to make a realistic jute or hemp style rope procedurally in Blender. I'll start by adding a circle and then lowering the poly count down a bit. Then I'll scale it down in edit mode and move it along the x-axis. It's important to do this in edit mode, as if the object size is modified globally, it will affect how the procedurals calculate and mess up your results. Then I'll add an array modifier and set it to object, making sure to uncheck relative. Then I'll add an empty and set it as the array object. This will let me rotate the circle around the empty, creating a radial array. I'll set the array count to 4, and then rotate the empty itself, which will determine the angle of the radial array. In this case, I want to use 90 degrees, as the rope will have four main strands. Now that we've modeled the base profile for our rope, we're going to add a screw modifier, which will let us rotate the geometry along an axis. Then we'll increase the screw length until we get a result that looks correct. Make sure the screw angle is set to 360 so that we get a full rotation. You'll also notice that the threads look a little bit squished along the z-axis. To fix this, we're going to go back into edit mode and rotate the circle around the x-axis by 45 degrees. Now we have the base unit for our rope. At this point, I like to check the face orientation to make sure the normals are facing the right way. You can find this option in the overlay dropdown in the top right corner. If the outside of your model is red, click the flip checkbox in the screw modifier to flip the normals. Next, I'm going to add a Bezier curve object and parent both the rope and the empty to the curve. It's important to keep the origins of all objects aligned so that the modifiers work properly. This curve will later set the shape of our rope. Going back to the rope object, I'm going to make sure that the screw length in the screw modifier is a whole number without any hidden decimals. Then I'm going to add an array modifier. Uncheck the relative offset and instead check constant offset. Copy the value from the screw length into the Z offset. If everything was set up correctly, your rope should now be arrayed along the z-axis. Be sure to click the Merge checkbox to merge the vertices at the end of the array and remove any seams. Because we're going to be using a curve to shape the rope, you can set the fit type to fit curve. This will automatically set the array count to fit the length of the curve. Lastly, add a curve modifier and select your main curve. Make sure that it's using the z-axis as a deformation axis, as our rope is arrayed along the z-axis. Here, I'm going to select all points in the curve and set the handle type to automatic for simpler editing. At this point, you could even apply a metallic texture and use the model as steel cable for an industrial scene. However, since we want to make a detailed rope, we're going to want to UV map it. To do this, I'm going to need to apply the screw modifier so that I have actual geometry to work with. Right now, it's just a ring of vertices. I'm going to alt-click along one of the poly loops that runs along the rope. Then I'm going to mark a seam for unwrapping. You'll then want to go into the UV editing layout by clicking the UV editing workspace tab at the top of the interface. Here I already have some textures I made loaded in. You can find a link for these down in the description. Feel free to use them for your own rope. Next we want to get a clean unwrap with straight geometry and no distortion. To do this, we're going to use Follow Active Quads. Follow Active Quads is a bit of an odd UV unwrap method. First you need to unwrap your model using the standard unwrap, and then select an active polygon. Then you want to straighten out the active polygon so it's perfectly square in the UV view by using a line X and a line Y. Then you can run follow active quads without it giving you a strange result. Now I'm going to switch over to the shader editor layout and add the textures. Whenever you import material textures into Blender, be sure to set the images other than the base color to non-color data. Otherwise, a gamma curve will be applied to the image, giving you an incorrect result. Going back to the UV editing layout, I'm going to change the display mode to look dev to see my textures. Right now you'll notice that the texture is running around the circumference of the rope. 
If you look at references of real rope online, you'll notice that the strands run more parallel to the rope with a slight angle. Since I made this a tileable texture, it's easy to rotate the UV map and get a different angle on the strands. Now it's time to edit the curve to set the shape of our rope. While I was looking for references, I saw a rope that was tied into a harp. I'm going to try to replicate that here because I really like the idea. Just extrude, subdivide, and move points until you're happy with the overall shape. I wasn't happy with my first attempt, so I deleted most of the points and started over again. Now if you look at a reference of an actual rope, you'll notice that a lot of the strands fray and there's like little hairs all over it. So next we're going to add a particle system to simulate that. For the particle type, we're going to want to choose hair, and we're also going to want to enable the advanced checkbox so that we can edit some of these hidden settings. You'll want to choose faces as the emission source, and be sure to check use modifier stack or all the hairs will only grow on the first part of the array. I'm also going to add some children particles, brownian noise, and crank up some of the randomness sliders. Just play around with it until you find something you think looks right. You may also want to add some endpoint roughness to make the strands more chaotic. Once you've set up the hair the way you want it in the display, if you switch over to render you'll notice that they're all black. You'll want to make a duplicate of the rope material for the strands, removing the normal input. Then you'll want to go into the particle settings and set the strands to use the second material slot. And that's it! The rope is ready to use in your scene. Here I'm just going to set up some lighting and do a quick render. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think in the comments below.